Today's video is sponsored by Current. The 2012 NFL Draft had it all. The top running back prospect since Adrian Peterson, three top 10 quarterbacks, and one of the hardest hitting players of this generation. And Smith will run for a while. Oh, lowers his shoulder and gets rocked by Barrett. In this loaded top 10, six went on to make at least one Pro Bowl throughout their career. But as stacked as this top 10 appears, it also has a lot of disappointment. As of April 2022, only two of them are still in the NFL. So, as I do every year, here is what happened to the top 10 picks from 10 years ago. Also, side note, since I have done recent videos on both quarterbacks and receivers from this class, I'm going to keep their sections brief. Anyways, let's jump in. With the first pick in the 2012 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Andrew Luck, quarterback, stand with the second pick in the 2012 NFL Draft. The Washington Redskins select Robert Griffin III, quarterback, Bill. These two quarterbacks will be forever linked together, as both saw an early end to their careers from somewhat similar reasons. Both started off with an excellent rookie season, but then RG3 began to battle injuries shortly thereafter, and due to this issue, he tried to change his playstyle from an RPO quarterback to a pocket passer. It didn't work, and the injuries left him a journeyman until he retired following 2020. Andrew Luck had quite a bit more sustained success, turning the Colts around and going on to make four Pro Bowls in the five seasons that he started for them. But with the lack of support around him, Luck took a beating, and injuries ended up leading him to an early retirement before the 2019 season. Talent-wise, they both showed at points why they were taken number one and two, but the violent nature of the game caught up to them. Now, before we go on to the third pick, a word from our sponsor, Current. Current is the future of banking, as it is entirely on your phone with a mobile app and debit card. Once I activated my current card, I decided to go out and use it at some different stores. I got some Cleveland Browns gear and some Cleveland Cavaliers socks. Also, Current launched a brand new feature called Interest with a 4.00% APY. That's 60 times the national average. 4% is insane and more than anybody else. Oh, and by the way, Current is helping me give away $100 to 10 of you. So go ahead and download the app and use my code Karsten so you don't miss out on the 4%. Once again, shout out to Current for the sponsor. Now let's get on to the number three pick. With the third pick in the 2012 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Trent Richardson, running back, Alabama. Running backs rarely go in the top three. In fact, there's only been four of them in the last 25 years. But Trent Richardson was as dominant a college back as there ever was. At 5'9", 230 pounds, he was so ridiculously strong and powerful that it usually took multiple defenders to slow him down. His weight room numbers were off the charts with a known bench press at 475 pounds and a squat over 600. Some believed that he was the best prospect since Adrian Peterson back in 2007. As a rookie in Cleveland, even though Trent Richardson was seventh in the NFL in rushing touchdowns, his abysmal 3.6 yards per carry ranked him near the bottom of the NFL. And it was also the lowest among rookies. Then, the following year, even though it was still early in Trent Richardson's career, one of the most shocking trades took place. Just after two games, the Browns sent Trent Richardson to the Colts for a first round pick. This now meant that the number one and number three pick from the 2012 draft were now in the same offense. But rather quickly, it appeared that the Browns won this trade considering that Richardson struggled to the point of being benched in favor of career backup Donald Brown. 2014 was much of the same, and Richardson for three straight years had one of the worst yards per carry in the NFL. 
In fact, among NFL running backs with at least 500 carries, he had the second worst yards per attempt since the NFL merger back in the 1960s. It had gotten so bad that he was waived after 2014 by the Colts. After that, he failed to make another NFL final roster, and he went on to play in the CFL, AAF, and the Mexican Football League as of 2021. With the fourth pick in the 2012 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Matt Khalil, tackle USC. In college, Matt Khalil was regarded as the best offensive tackle prospect in 2012. He also had an older brother who had become an all-pro level center. At first, things looked promising, with Khalil reaching the Pro Bowl as a rookie. But based on his career PFF grades, he never reached the same level of play. He wasn't terrible, but he certainly wasn't a cornerstone tackle like they thought he'd be. After 2016, where Matt Khalil only played two games due to a hip injury, Khalil chose to leave Minnesota for a fresh start, eventually signing with Carolina for a five-year, $55 million contract. This meant that he would also get the chance to play alongside his brother, making them the first set of brothers to play on the same offensive line in 24 years. But Matt would go on to have his worst PFF graded season as a pro that year, and unfortunately, a serious knee injury prior to the 2018 season pretty much ended his career, since he would never play another snap. With the fifth pick in the 2012 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Justin Blackman, wide receiver, Oklahoma State. Like Andrew Luck and Archie 3 I did make a video less than a year ago which covered the story of Justin Blackman, so I'm going to keep things brief. Justin Blackman was a superb athlete at Oklahoma State with just about every physical trait that made him the perfect receiving prospect. But a non-stop barrage of off-the-field issues stemming from his college days derailed his pro career. He only managed to play in 20 NFL games before multiple suspensions kept Blackman out of football. Receivers rarely go in the top five of the NFL draft. So for Blackman to achieve this honor and play less than two seasons, is at the very least a huge disappointment. With the sixth pick in the 2012 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Morris Claiborne, defensive back, LSU. One of the biggest risers during the 2012 draft process was Morris Claiborne, who had gone from a projected second round pick or later, all the way to being a unanimous top 10 selection. This was because of his elite speed, overall athleticism, and phenomenal ball skills. Scouts from Dallas even had Claiborne as their highest graded cornerback since Deion Sanders. Wow. Well, turns out he didn't play like Deion Sanders. Not even close. The man struggled to stay healthy and performed poorly, according to PFF, throughout his first four years. 2016 was the final year in which Claiborne flashed his potential but the man could not stay on the field because of the injuries. He went on to sign with New York later on, where he was a decent level starter, but nothing special. He also played one year in Kansas City before being out of the NFL. Overall, this dude will be seen as a bust by Cowboys fans. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Mark Barron, defensive back, Alabama. In college, Mark Barron had built quite the reputation as a hard-hitting safety. And kicks leveled at the 40-yard line by Mark Barron. Mike Mayock said that Barron's floor, meaning the worst-case scenario, was that he would be a Pro Bowl-level safety. So, how did things translate to the NFL? It's not there. All alone, and Smith will run for a while. Oh, lowers his shoulder and gets rocked. Perhaps one of the game's biggest hitters, Mark Barron made offensive players keep their head on a swivel. But other than big hits, was Mark Barron a good player? Throughout his early years, Barron struggled to find a role best suited to his skill set. As a strong safety, he was mostly below average in coverage, which hindered the Bucks' defense. It didn't take long for Tampa to move off of him trading Barron midway through his third season in exchange for some late draft picks. Then with the Rams, Barron moved from safety 
to linebacker, which ended up helping him out. He would go on to have the best three-year stretch of his career there, but even then, he only ranked out as an average level defender according to PFF. So overall, besides his big hits, he was a bottom level starter for most of his career. He ended up playing his last season in 2019 with the Steelers. With the eighth pick in the 2012 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select Ryan Tannehill, quarterback, Texas a and After becoming the third quarterback in the top 10, Tannehill got off to a slow start. He would go on to improve later on, becoming the fourth quarterback in NFL history to throw for over 3K yards in each of his first four seasons. But in six seasons in Miami, Tannehill never quite took the steps to become a top 10 level starter, and Miami failed to ever win eight games in a season with him. After a season ending injury in 2017, followed up by a disappointing 2018, Tannehill was traded to Tennessee. And since then, Tannehill truly revitalized his career. In 2019, seven years after being drafted, Tannehill reached the Pro Bowl for the first time, helping Tennessee become one of the surprise teams in the AFC. But since their surprise run in 2019, the Tannehill Titans have felt held back because of Tannehill. At this point, it seems as if Tannehill isn't a top level guy that you can count on to carry you to playoff wins. But according to PFF, he was the eighth ranked quarterback last season. So he's still been pretty good. With the ninth pick in the 2012 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Luke Keekley, linebacker, Boston College. In a draft mostly filled with guys who hadn't lived up to their expectations, we now have Luke Keekley. They're going to throw it, and it's intercepted by Keekley. Keekley on his feet. To start off his career, he led the entire NFL in tackles as a rookie. He went on to win Defensive Rookie of the Year. Then, the following season, he won Defensive Player of the Year, becoming the youngest player to ever win the award. And from there, he never stopped dominating. He went on to make seven Pro Bowls in a row and also achieved five first-team All-Pros, meaning that he was the best or second-best middle linebacker in the game throughout those years. He's a huge reason why Carolina's defense was so dominant in 2015, and it's part of why they made the Super Bowl. What made Keekly so good was, alongside his tackling ability, he was rated among the best coverage players every year of his career, and he ranked out as the best coverage defender of everybody in 2015. This is pretty mind-blowing considering that he is a 240-pound linebacker. However, he only ended up playing eight seasons, and how his career ended felt so sudden and sad. Keekly retired after 2019 due to concussions. I think they go with back the 10th pick the in the 2012 NFL Draft. The Buffalo Bills select Stephon Gilmore, defensive back, South Carolina. Stephon Gilmore, like Morris Claiborne, had moved up from a day two type of draft pick to cracking the top 10. He was well rounded as a prospect, being able to make plays in both the run and pass game. His pro career started a little slow but progressively he improved each and every season. Then by 2016, he had developed into a star level corner. With his best year as a pro coming at the end of his rookie contract, the Bills decided that the price tag was too steep to keep him around. And their rivals, the Patriots, after seeing the damage that this guy had done to their team over the years, swooped in and gave Gilmore a $65 million deal. Let's just say they easily got their money's worth. 15, Dalton picked off. Gilmore down the sideline. See you later. In New England, Stephon Gilmore blossomed into the best corner in the NFL, taking home the Defensive Player of the Year award in 2019. It's amazing when you look at his PFF grades. New England definitely won big by picking up this dude and he helped them win a Super Bowl with a clutch late interception versus the Rams. Overall, Gilmore would spend a total of four years in New England before being traded to Carolina, where he was last year, 
and now he's a member of the Colts. With five Pro Bowls to his name, he may go on to continue to be successful into his mid-30s. But his most memorable moment to me has to be that play that he had back in the 2018 AFC Championship. All three corners over here. Stepping up and throwing, and it is. 